Hello and welcome to Standard 6 of the Oklahoma State Department of Education presentations with all of the resources to teach personal finance. We get to visit with um, Shay McCrary today from Muldrow and she is the um, expert in, um, in teaching um, uh, um, teaching the standard and she even has her, her banner in the back of her. You can barely see it but she just there goes yes um, they won first place in the stock market game um, for for this last semester and is um, a frequent winner of the stock market game. I know she's going to talk more about that later, but um, she is a, a great resource in teaching this standard. So I'll go ahead and hand it off um, over to you, Shay, um, to talk more about all the resources and how you um, teach the standard in your class. Okay, so as Amy said, my name is Shay McCrary and I teach financial literacy at Muldrow High School. And my primary way of teaching personal financial literacy skills is through the standards that the State Department of Education provides. Um, I also embed some other activities from other resources that I have found over the years. I am one of those teachers that I like kids moving, talking. Um, I just like there to be some fun in the classroom. So I'm going to show you guys those as I go through this presentation. So the standard that we're going to look at today is saving and investing. Um, this lesson has been newly updated and the way that the lessons began and I like the whole lesson structure because it starts with a cool story and it gets the students actually engaged and involved. Uh, it's relatable stories that they can relate to. Um, then it goes into great vocabulary, uh, which allows for understanding of the lesson that you're teaching. And then um, there are discussion questions. I'm all about the discussion questions. And enrichment activities, love those. And then there is a personal financial literacy. There's a slide deck that goes with each standard. So it's PowerPoint. And I'm not gonna go through those slides today. I'm actually just going to use the teacher guide. Um, there is a student handout, there's the slides, and then there is the teacher guide. So because it shows the, the framework and the structure, I'm just gonna use that today. So um, I will pull that up right now. And while you're doing that, Shay, I'll just let those that are watching the video, um, all of these resources can be found on the State Department of Education website. You can and, um, go there and look for financial literacy. You can also go to moneyisok.com and um, there's a page for every standard of our personal finance standards and then um, go directly to that standard. And all of the State Department is the first one that listed. And then there's other resources after that once you um, go to Money is OK. Okay, so to get started, this is the intro to the saving and investing unit. Um, I like how it's laid out, and this is going to show you right off the bat every section that is in this standard. So we're going to start with the getting started, which just talks about the basic um, facts of investing. Overview is the lesson is designed to give students an understanding of how and why to start saving for the future. And then we know that the le lesson objectives um, describe the reasons that people save and invest. Uh, the cost and benefits of saving and the difference between saving and investing. And then here's the vocabulary that will need to be discussed with the students so that they have a better understanding of what's going on in the lesson. Now, um, here's the framework. It, it literally gives you a step-by-step -step instruction of what you can do to make this a good lesson for the students. And it follows right along with the slides that you'd be showing them. Now, I'm going to scoot on down just a little bit. Um, I love the alternative assessments that are on the SDE curriculum. Uh, for example, have students complete an exit ticket identifying three things that they learned in this lesson. That's good for me, lets me know that I got the point across to them. And then have students write a letter to a younger sibling, family member or friend, explaining the concept of opportunity costs and how it relates to saving for the future. So I think these are great activities that you can do um, with your students after you've completed the lesson. Now, a few things that I do, um, I love this interactive. It's called Spent. Uh, the website is playspent.org. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this while I'm talking about it a little bit. It gives students, gives students an uh, opportunity to see how they can make it through the month. So this actually simulates uh, savings are gone. You're down to your last $1,000. You've lost your home. Uh, can you make it through the month with $1,000? So there's several things that go into this. My students enjoy this, and unfortunately, many can relate. 
I'll turn that volume down just a little bit. Okay, so imagine you're, you've lost your job, your savings are gone. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find a job. You get to choose between a few jobs. Okay, I'm not gonna go through the entire simulation. I will tell you that the simulation is 15 minutes long. So here is the second shift job. Um, here is, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that one. Um, so I've just chosen that job. There are three to choose from. I really didn't mean to click on that one. So your monthly pay is based on hours per week, but temp jobs are often, they vary in their hours. So weekly pay is $306. So if you look over here to your left, it keeps a balance a running total of how much money you have left. There are job strikes. Job strikes mean, you know, it's kind of like when you're talking about opportunity costs, you decide you need to do something else instead of going to your job. You miss a day of work as a temp, you're going to get a job strike, three strikes and you're out. You have, you have to file for bankruptcy because you have not been able to make it through the month. Um, other things over here, when you are desperate, desperate, you need cash. You can choose to smash your kid's piggy bank for $16.23. You can choose to donate plasma. You can get a payday loan for $50. That's a great opportunity to talk about. Never get a payday loan, ever. Um, that's a good lesson in itself. So uh, I'm just going to go through a few minutes of this. So the Affordable Care Act requires that you get insurance. Which plan do you want? Well, do you go for the $329 a month Supreme plan or do you opt out and hope you don't get sick or have an accident for $12? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm gonna opt out. Result, when the penalty for not buying insurance is so low compared to the cost of coverage, it's no surprise that low-income workers choose to opt out. Okay, so I opted out. It reduced my balance by $12. Now, I've got to find a place to rent, $725 a month plus my travel costs. I don't have a choice, I have to have a place to live, so I pay it. As you can see, it reduces my balance here in just a moment. You decided to live farther away from your job, so your rent is lower, but your gas costs are higher. So there you go, now my balance is down to 180. New apartment is too small for your stuff. Do you rent a storage building? Well, I don't have $45, and these are decisions that the students have to make. Um, have a yard sale, ask a friend to store it. Okay, I'm gonna have a yard sale. I need to have some money coming in. Okay, you made $150 in your yard sale. So my balance has gone up to 330. You ended your work at one company or waiting for another call from a temp. Unfortunately, this is a slow week and you missed three days at work. Um, that's gonna be a job strike, I'm sure. Uh, oh no, it's just because they weren't busy. You've been putting off doing laundry for weeks because you don't have a washer or dryer. What do you wanna do? Spend 30 bucks at the laundromat, ask a friend, where it already closed. Well, we have to make decisions. So you get the gist of this simulation. It's all about choices and all about those choices, how they will affect whether you can survive that month on the amount of money that you have. Um, okay, the next thing I have, there is an activity that you can actually do. Uh, it's on NextGen Personal Finance. It's a great website to create an account on. Everything is free. Uh, a great thing to do is have students create a public service announcement just to inspire saving. So this is laid out for you from A to Z. Your students basically have a rubric for which they are to make this PSA. They love doing this. They may love making a commercial. They love um, having fun with this. It's a very uh, good activity for them to participate in. Again, everything is laid out. Even at the bottom, it makes them do a check have you covered all of these things in your public service announcement? You can choose to do it in live in front of the class or as a video and have them edit the video and have those types of skills as well. So the next lesson is on the rule of 72. This is the next part of the standard. The rule of 72 examines the difference between simple and compound interest as well as knowing what that rule of 72 means. So here's my objective. I wanna compare what the difference between simple and compound interest is, how to calculate it, and use the rule of 72 to determine how long it's gonna take me to double my money. So this is great, it's got great vocab. Um, all of these are covered in the slides. So again, you're gonna ask students to identify something they would like to buy. Encourage them to think about something that is expensive and beyond their current budget, like a new phone. Ask if they have a savings plan on how to purchase this. Tell them to imagine they were halfway to their goal, then ask how much longer it will take to double their money. Makes them do a little math, makes them really understand the concept of compound interest and how, power, how powerful it is. 
Um, okay, so the teacher guys, we get down to the alternative assessments. I love these. Write this quote on the board and have students write a paragraph explaining how it relates to today's lessons. Those who both spend and save money are the happiest because they both they have both enjoyments. Now this can be an assignment or it can just be uh, a class discussion. And then there is a great video on um, how, what the power of compound interest, what it means and how it works. So it's a great video to watch for your students. Now there is an activity that I really like that goes with this. Again, I'm going to be a little clumsy and go all the way down. Okay, it's the rule of 72 cheer. Um, I like this. It's a copy of a cheer page that you hand out and the students actually team up into groups and they lead a cheer. Um, I think the high school students, I think any age students would like this. And here is the cheer, the actual chant they are to do. Um, I just think this is something you might want to take a look at as a teacher. Again, one of those hands-on, move around the classroom type of activities. All right, so I do have a few activities outside of the OSDE curriculum that I like to look at. So this is actually the Rule of 72 video that they talk about in the SDE um, handout. So I highly recommend you do this. This is two minutes and 30 seconds of good information. And then there's also a fun activity um, called question of the day. Let's see if we can find it. Um, well, for some reason it's hiding underneath the ID code for the meeting. Okay, we'll just do this one instead. Okay, so this I actually took from the Financial Fitness for Life book. If you have not heard of that, um, it's put out by the Council of Economic Education. Okay, so again, this is something I got from Financial Fitness for Life. Um, there is a game in there called, um, it's called the Millionaire Game, and there are several statements, and I put them on my TV, and students have to decide if it's true or false. Well, I love this one when I'm doing the Compound Interest to Rule of 72 lesson. Um, is this possible at age 18, you decide not to drink soda from the vending machine, saving $1.50 a day. You invest this $1.50 per day at 8% interest until age 67. At age 67, your savings from not buying soda are almost $300,000. True or false? It's true. Um, students are astounded at this. It's the power of compound interest. A small savings can make a huge difference over time. Um, I encourage calculators. I offer prizes if any teams can come up with the correct math for this. Um, I'll let them work on it at their, at their desk as a team. And then when they're comfortable, they can come up and they can do the math on the board to show us that this is actually possible. Okay, so the next- Share a quick plug for that, the Financial Fitness for Life book. If yeah. there's a teacher that wants that, we are glad to provide that for um, a teacher. If they let us know, we can get that sent to them. And then also the Millionaire Game is one of the best games, and that can be found on Econ Edlink. And there's actually a whole um, PowerPoint that goes with it that you can find on Econ Edlink. And we'll be sure and put um, that in the notes um, to this video that we're watching. So I'm glad you had that as an example. That's definitely definitely a, um, one of the favorites of all time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So the next one is um, section three, saving investing strategies. Um, okay, so this lesson examines the costs and benefits of various savings and investment strategies. Uh, this module allows you to cover uh, the multiple asset classes or investment tools that you can use. Um, also to explain that there is a difference in your objective and saving money for a short-term reason, and that's usually very safe, versus investing, which is more risk involved with a chance of greater reward. So of course, we talk about with risk comes reward. So during this lesson. So this is a time when you um, talk about CDs, mutual funds, stocks, bonds, uh, risk that goes along with these, rate of return. So. I love the story that this lesson starts with, with Haley and Hannah. I'm not going to go through the story for the sake of time, but it has a great relatable story. And then of course, great alternative assessments, have students define the vocabulary terms used in this lesson, or have students identify one potential challenge to develop a savings or investment plan with one strategy to overcome it. And also with this lesson, I love this interactive, again, as long as you guys can see this, I'm gonna 
be clunky and go down this way and show you the rating risk. So after you've covered all of these uh, different investment tools, then you can put students in groups of three or four, gives you the materials that you need, index cards, markers, and tapes. And you're gonna put those students in a group and you on your board uh, are gonna write high risk, low risk, and risk varies. And then each of these groups are gonna have these sticky notes that have all of these different investment tools. And among themselves, after you've done the lesson, they have to determine, you know, do they think stocks is low risk or do they think it's high risk? And they're gonna place that sticky note under which category they believe it goes. And then there's great discussion after that. Um, then you can explain to them why stocks are not considered to be a low risk investment, et cetera. So this is a great teaching tool. Um, okay, there is also a few outside activities that I use. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, can you see the question of the day, Amy? Yes. Okay, awesome. So the question of the day, what percent of teens started saving money by the age of 12? Well, the answer is 56%. And again, this is information and activities that I find on NextGen Personal Finance. The great thing about NextGen is they do have slides ready to go for you. So if I click on the ready to go slides, and they're usually brief, it's just gonna pop up very slowly. Here they are. Okay, so I can put this on my board and ask my class what percent of teens started saving by age 12. And then it's gonna give them graphs. And of course, it's great that they know how to read graphs, especially for the ACT. So we go through the, the graphs. So here's the young millennials. You know, it tells, I know this is really small, but it shows that you know 63% of millennials started saving um, at the age of 12 and that teens, 56% of teens had started saving. So good information and then great discussion questions. You know, what do you think are some of the benefits of saving? Are you currently saving? Why or why not? Do you have any saving strategies? So just things to get everybody talking in your class. Um, there's also my very favorite on the planet thing to do. After you've taught this lesson, now kids have an, an idea of what investment tools are out there for them, then they could participate in something called the stock market game, which is the greatest thing has ever happened to my classroom. Um, my students have been participating in the stock market game for a very long time. And here's just a little description. And it is operated by the wonderful people at the council. Um, Amy and Janie are wonderful to deal with. And this is just a blessing to have in your classroom. So the stock market game is an online simulation of the global capital markets that engages students in grades four through 12 in the world of economics, investing and personal finance. And that has prepared nearly 20 million students for financially independent futures. I strongly recommend you signing your students up. This is a free game. It is a very high-tech simulation of real-time trading. So in the game, my students will start with $100,000 in equity of cash. And they play this game for 10 weeks. And at the end of the game, whoever the high, has the highest equity wins the game. But they love it because things are traded in real time. So if they're buying 100 shares of Nike, at 8.35 in the morning, they get the same price as someone who's actually buying the stock um, in real life would. So they love being able to calculate their, their gains and losses constantly. They're doing math, they're learning, but they're having so much fun. So they don't realize that it's a learning opportunity. They just know it's fun. So um, I honestly cannot say enough good things about this. Your students will have fun. It will bring competition to your classroom. They're competing against each other. They're also competing against teams across the state. So I wanna bring up the rankings from this past game. Um, so I have to brag on my students. I have a team called the Ticker Tape Dudes. Uh, team captain is named Dude Turnips. He really was his name, uh, is his name. Mulder High School first, but look at all those teams across the state that actually compete in this. So you're competing against all over the state as well as in the classroom. Um, so it just brings a lot of excitement. Again, it is free. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm sure that Janie or Amy at the council would love to help you out with that.
Yes, absolutely. And, and we got to, as you saw in um, the background of Shay's um, uh, in her classroom that she was the recent um, state champion and we got to celebrate them by a visit to the Capitol um, for, and a uh, day with the treasurer. And one of the things that I loved hearing from your students, Shay, is um, one of them in particular said that they didn't even know what a stock was before they started um, playing this game. And now they're having a conversation with the treasurer about, uh, about the stock that they pick, the, the, why they pick those, and, and having a back and forth conversation about um, all their decisions that they made. And I thought that was just, it was really incredible to see that and um, really shows the value of the game and how much that, that brings to students. Exactly. It is amazing to see them talking with the state treasurer for our state. And he had experience in uh, the brokerage business, so had a background. And so that they could converse with him, that, that, that makes me very happy as a teacher. And they had a great day, so we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the last, not the last, but the last two sections are pretty similar. Um, five, four, saving and investing strategies. And the overview is the lesson examines the costs and benefits of various uh, savings and investment strategies, focusing on time, risk, and inflation. So, the lesson objectives are listed in here. Again, these are some similar terms that we have probably already discussed. You know, asset class and diversification is a huge deal. And that's what this section really focuses on. So if you're gonna teach your kids about investments, we have to teach them that diversification among asset classes or among investment tools or among different sectors of stocks is very important. Um, the old don't put your eggs in one basket uh, theory always works in investments. So there's a great lesson with this. Let me just scroll down a little. Um, the alternative assessments, I, I love all of these. So um, have students write a paragraph responding to one or both quotations. Money is the opposite of the weather. No one talks about it, but everybody does something about it. Or those who both spend and save money are the happiest because they have both enjoyment. So a great just a discussion topic or actually have them do some writing. There is a really good um, lesson that goes with this. Let's see, it is called the eggs in your ba own basket. Okay, so um, here are the materials needed, baskets, plastic eggs, and a ball that you can drop as an illustration. Put students into small groups. Give each group one piece sheet of paper. Um, I'm gonna skip down to number two. Show students that you have put all of the plastic eggs in one basket. Tell the students the basket of eggs represents money that would be invested in one type of option, such as personal savings. Hold the ball over the basket and ask the students to discuss what would happen if the ball dropped on all the eggs, relating it to their personal savings. And then as you go down the activity, you separate the eggs, placing one egg in each basket and tell the students that each of the separated eggs represents different types of investments, mutual funds, stocks, bonds, et cetera. And once again, hold the ball over the baskets and ask the students to discuss what would happen to all the eggs if the ball dropped on that single egg. So again, don't put all your eggs in one basket because uh, you know, that's the worst thing you can do as far as how you will lose your money very quickly. You can't, you can't bet on one thing. And the great thing about the stock market game is there is a rule that you cannot put more than 30% of your money in to one stock. So 30% is the mass. You can't put all $100,000 of your, of your um, into one stock. You can put all $100,000 of your dollars into one stock, such as GameStop. I mean, that would be um, not very prudent as an investor. So it's something I like to teach them. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back up to the last standard or the last section of the standards. So man managing monetary risk. Um, this lesson describes the different types of risk that can impact saving and investing options. So what I really like to talk in this section is about inflation risk and also market risk. So my kids love to learn about real life events. So I think they need to understand that things like natural disasters, politics, um, news on specific companies, can all affect the stock price. So being that they like to know about those real events, I always do a little study over, and you have to be probably close to my age. Some people may not know what this is if you're younger, 
But back in the 80s, there was a, okay, so the Tylenol murders. There was some crazy person that was uh, going around and either taking Tylenol off the counters, off the shelves in stores, and they were basically taking the powder out of the capsule that's back when you buy cap, uh, Tylenol in a capsule, and they would replace the cyanide. So people would go to the store to buy uh, headache medicine, and then they would take this medicine, and it would actually kill them. So I'm just going to type this in here. Tylenol, I can't spell. Tylenol murders. There are multiple videos on YouTube that, that talk about um, the different... This is actually a really good one right here. A trusted pill turned deadly, how Tylenol made a comeback. So the reason that we do this and it interests kids because it actually happened is because it affected the stock price. I mean, they did a massive recall. Um, people were going through the streets with, with, um, with, with, I forgot what those things are called, that you can make loud noises and they're telling people to go ahead and throw away your Tylenol um, or take it back to the store because you could die if you took a Tylenol. So the parent company of Tylenol then was actually Johnson & Johnson. So we do a, a historical study on the price of the stock, what, how the price uh, fell and when it finally started to recover based on things that Tylenol did for damage control. So uh, that's just a thought that you guys, if you would like to do something fun. Um, there's also a video on YouTube about the power of diversification something I highly recommend. Again, it's a really short video. It's two minutes, 52 seconds. There's also uh, something called an Ed Puzzle. Ed Puzzle is an interactive. It is something that you can assign to your students. They watch a video and as the video goes along, it will stop and it requires them to answer a question. A lot of times it is a um, multiple choice question, um, maybe a true or false, but it makes sure that they are listening and understanding what has been said in the video. So um, that's something that's really great to use whenever you are teaching diversification and when you're teaching about saving and investing. And then the final thing that I like to use, because I know Amy doesn't want me to go over my time limit too long, but, and I can't see it on here, but I'm just going to pull it up. It is an investment, and it is called Build Your Stacks, as in stacks of money. Yes, this is a great resource. I'm glad you're sharing this. This is a great, and I tell you right now, if you start playing it in your classroom, your kids will come in asking every day, can we please play stacks? So after you've covered those asset classes of stocks, bonds, mutual funds, um, real estate even, you can play this game. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on it. I'm going to start playing it, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Again, it is a super interactive. It's 20 minutes long. Students play or compete against each other as well as the computer. It will give students the opportunity to invest in multiple asset classes that are unlocked as the game progresses. So I'm gonna tell you up front that it starts just a little bit slow. It does simulate 20 years of investing in 20 minutes. So each year is one minute long. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start clicking through this and we'll play just a little bit of it so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, you start with $4,000 of pocket cash and every six months your pocket cash will refill. So six months equates to 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, you're gonna get another $4,000. So the name of the game is keeping your money working for you to keep it invested. Um, again, there will be seven, diff seven different investments unlocked. Each one has a mini tutorial that goes along with it. Now you've already taught the information about what a stock is, a bond is, but in case they just wanna remind themselves, then you, they can read the little tutorial. So again, here's a little tutorial. It'll explain how it works. Um, here's another one on gold. And there'll be a leaderboard that you can, you can take or keep track of. And it's so wonderful because they're competing against each other inside the class and their names are up on the board and it gets loud and I love it. Okay, so let's see if we can go ahead. All right, again, it starts very slow. And I'm on pause for some reason. Why am I paused? Okay, so you read about the savings account and once you are telling the game that you understand what a savings account is, you click on got it and okay, now it opens up. So I've got $4,000. I can click on deposit and I'm gonna go ahead and put my whole 4,000 in there. 
I like to keep my money working for me. Okay, so in just a few seconds, I should get more money. I'm already at $9.90 on my savings account. Again, it takes a few minutes to get going. And once all the investments open up, it gets pretty fast paced and gets a little crazy and a little stressful. It, it can be overwhelming to my students sometimes. All right, so I've got more money that just sits. I'm gonna put 3,000. Now they're gonna be life events. Oh, hey, here's a life event. There's been a burglary, burglary at your home. Unfortunately, they got away with some jewels and electronics, but everyone was safe. Maybe it's time to cough up some money and install a security system. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have to do that. I've got money in pocket cash. So I'm gonna pay with that. Okay, I'm still gonna go ahead and put some money in my savings account. I don't like it just sitting there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the 3000 in there. Oh, in the meantime, I've got more money. Um, okay, um, let's see. I gotta get that out of there. Okay, I can unlock another investment. Certificate of deposit. Again, if you don't remember what it was, you can read through the tutorial and it shows you how to do any buying and I click on got it and now I can start buying, okay. So I've got cash, I've got $4,800 in cash. So I can click over here on the leaderboard and I can see that the computer is beating me right now. So here's me and here's the computer. Now your entire class will show up on the leaderboard, which is great. I usually put it on my, on my uh, TV screen and I'm constantly yelling out, okay, Tommy's in first, now Susie's in second. Oh no, it's switched, now Tommy's in first. I kind of keep it kind of stirred up, honestly. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna buy, I'm not gonna go through this entire, um, simulation, but I am just want I wanted to show you guys how this works. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I've got 13,000 cash. It's way too much. I'm going to put $10,000. There's another one unlocking. Uh-oh. Things are happening. See, it gets a little crazy. Index fund. I have to learn what it is. Got it. Um, okay. I'll pay with pocket cash. I'm still looking to buy some money uh, or buy some certificate deposit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm buy 5,000. Click on, uh oh, it's not 50. 5,000, I buy it, I'm gonna run down here and I wanna jump in the index fund. So this will continue, stocks will open up, commodities will open up, multiple things will open up. And uh, again, it, it's a very fast pace. At first, the first time they play it, they are a little confused about what's going on. And then once they get the hang of it, they're gonna come in the next day and they're gonna wanna buy it. It shows you how much you're down. So there's my, I'm down to uh, $545, I'm up 112 on my CD. Here's my balance of my savings account. Great simulation uh, for your students to keep them engaged and um, interested in investing. So I think that's about all I have, Amy. Is there anything that you would like me to add? Um, you know, I would love to hear from you, Shay, just um, why you love teaching personal finance. Um, uh, yeah, tell me, tell me some, uh, a little bit about that. Um, okay, well, I was a business major, a finance major in college. Uh, teaching wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, I didn't think. So I spent a lot of years in the brokerage business and then decided um, that I wanted to begin to teach. And so I have, I have a passion for um, a passion for the stock market. I have a passion for teaching students about, you know, things I've messed up in the past. Um, you know, when I teach about credit score, for example, I always tell them, I'm not going to teach you a lesson today. And they say, yay, I'm so excited. You're not going to, we don't have to do anything. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not going to teach you about credit score. I'm going to preach to you about it. So um, it is, it's just something I feel very strongly about. I tell them they have to, they have to treat that credit score like it's their newborn child. They have to change its diaper. They have to feed it a bottle and keep it very happy because it dictates your life. So, well, I'll go ahead and thank you so much, Shay, for um, for sharing with us about um, what's in the State Department curriculum and so many extra resources that really um, bring bring some connectivity to um, to teaching this standard. We really appreciate your time.